Are you looking to sell your property without all the usual headaches associated with traditional property sales? Maybe you're looking for a straightforward, hassle-free, quick sale. We've got you covered at G67 Home Buyers. Ditch the stress of endless viewings, the waiting game with property chains, and the buyers missing deadlines. No matter the condition or location of your property, we are ready to buy. And guess what? We'll give you an instant cash offer, no traditional hoops to jump through. We get it. Sometimes you just need to sell fast, and we're here to make that happen. We'll often be able to buy in just a few days. You no longer need to worry about the sale falling through after weeks or months. We have buyers ready now. We handle everything for you, even paying your legal fees. And there is no hidden fees or estate agent commissions to pay. Just a smooth, easy sale with us by your side, helping you every step of the way. I am David Smith, and I will personally help you find a hassle-free solution to selling your property fast, beginning with a free, no obligation cash offer for your property. Remember, I am here to help. So get in touch in the link below and let's chat. Welcome to Social Sessions. I'm joined today with a very unique character who has both extensive lived experience in the justice system, but who is also extremely capable academically and is currently studying for a doctorate. Welcome, John McGee. How you doing, John? Uh, thanks, mate. Thanks for having me on. No, uh, it's obviously brilliant to have you. I've known you for a while, John, and it's excellent to have you. So... What a day we can everybody is just kind of take them back uh, just to their own kind of history. So it's just, I know you grew up in a kind of rough area in Muirhouse, but was that like, John? So I never actually grew up in Muirhouse. I grew up in a bit called West Grant, and it's not there anymore, but in North Edinburgh. Um, and I went to school in Muirhouse, so that's how I ended up kind of hanging about Muirhouse uh, growing up. And obviously, the kind of big kind of film that was made was kind of train spotting and stuff like that, and the kind of was 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 that a good kind of uh, light light lightness to what you seen, John? Um, well, not really, because I was not a heroin addict <laughs> when I was a child. But um, I, you, you would see people um, who are obviously addicted to drugs just kicking up at the streets. You'd see all the dirty needles in parks and stairwells. You'd come out your house in the morning. And there'd uh, be people jagging up in the stair or. Right. Um, every now and then you'd see like there was these drying greens at the bottom of the we stayed that bit called the ramps and every like third or fourth stair had like these drying greens right. so you, they should have metal shutters over them but the half the time they had been taken off or the windows had been taken off and you'd go in there and there'd be people just like slumped in the in the hangar like good obviously don't know if they were dead or just no well or right. whatever but um, I it was it was quite bad and. When when you're at school and stuff like that, do you just get kind of taught about how to deal with that kind of trauma and stuff? Like, nah, no really. So when we went to no, no at all. Wait, never mind, no really, no at all. <laughs> um, no even a wee bit to be honest with you. Um, nah, the the schools, the schools are just there to teach you what it was on the on the curriculum and localised problems are never got to be on the national curriculum so they would have right. any, wouldn't they have a, any real any real reason to have it on the on the curriculum for your local school but even right beside our our high school Craig Royston it's not the same as what it is now it used to be further up the road um, you'd go down and there'd be like uh, it was like an open air drug market in the in the sort of nineties, something like the wire, house, kind of like that. Not quite as organised as that, and never near as organised as as what you would see on the wire. But you would go in, and the, um, this was before they they end up building a big roof over the top of the uh, the bit. But there was a wall that I used to sit along. There'd be like maybe forty, forty drug addicts, alcoholics, what, wow. sometimes more. Like, like some days you would go down and they'd be named to show pin. The whole right. place would just be people there taking drugs, drinking. They'd be on the way to school, they'd be already there getting their drink for price check, the shop that was there. It's not there anywhere, I don't know what it's called now, but because um, they've knocked all that right. shopping bit down. But um, they'd all be sitting in a big long line and they built, a, they built this big king. Um, we used to call it the dome. I don't know what it's really called, right. but it just the middle bit of the shopping centre. So that um, provided shelter for obviously the elements. It's always pissing the rain, and when you would go up there um, on your way to school and then on your way back, and at lunchtime, the place was just mobbed with people just sitting up at the ground taking drugs, drinking, uh, whatever. The police police stations up the top of that road very rarely were they doing trying to 
move yeah, anybody manager. along, but move it along where? Well. Like manage it how? Do you know what I mean? Move them right. to where? Where they got to go? They would just go and date somewhere else if they were hanging there. At least they are. I'm guessing there was cameras and stuff. They were able to keep right. an eye on them or. Well, we were talking, somebody was talking, obviously they're talking about the kind of open injection sites and, and stuff that, that they're going to be putting out in Glasgow and Edinburgh and stuff. And I, I understand the, the harm reduction and I get that, but somebody kind of said to me, I think it was actually James Doherty, kind of said, do you honestly think people are going to get up that are, that are rattling and go on a train and go away into like the town just it says it's going to be just localised people that are going to be using this kind of thing so what, what would they rather would they rather that they never had that at all and the people are just still struggling wherever they're struggling everything starts with that first step like I'm no I don't know enough about um, these safe consumption rooms or whatever right. they're called I don't know enough about them to comment on them but what I do know is that Things always start with that one first step. So you have them locally, they work out, and I think mm -hmm. that's for what I've seen on Twitter is it only Glasgow? I don't even see it. I think it might just be Glasgow, John. So I think, I think right. Glasgow to start with. Um, so I think a lot of the harms, like for what I've understood, those are Glasgow, you've got like Dundee and stuff like that. It's really, really, really bad, really bad. Um, for um, drug deaths. Um, but Aberdeen's obviously got a drug problem, Inverness, you've got all the. Uh, we islands and the highlands yeah. and islands have got their, their own more local issues. All right. Uh, oh, aye, it, mate, anywhere where there's fucking poverty and desperation, there's no, people no. that are turning to substances to try and avoid it. When you're away at these places, you've got that, and then you've also got the issue that there's no local services. So in order to get a, to order to get any kind of help with whatever your issue is, aye. whether it be your mental health, mental health and drug addiction, whether it be physical disabilities aye. or whatever, everything's in a in a city or in a town. So when you stay away out there, like you've not really got the, I know, the, I know. the help that's at I've, hand. I've seen obviously like like we, we speak about. Um, I've seen kind of like people with Mojo in the miscarriage justice organisation and they kind of, they live up there in the kind of islands and they struggle to kind of get doing the groups and whatever and it's, right. it's, a, it's a, so I, it's so an issue. Go. So say, so say, so like what would the alternative be? Do, do we have this safe consumption rooms on day one in the highlands and islands? Do we have them in Orkney? Do we have them in... The Shetlands, do we have them in? I don't do you know, think it'd be better to start in the cities? It makes it's sense. No it's, it's not what's better or what's worse, it's what. So, thinking about for, thinking about for my point of view, I would have them in every street. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But, like, where's the money coming for, for that? Who's got to do it? Who oversees it? I know. Who works in all these places? Aye. Uh, how do you, where do you get the resources for them? So, thinking for, uh, like, you have, to, you have to be objective in these Aye. things and you have to go, right, well, what would be the best value for money for the little bit of funding they've probably got to attribute mm -hmm. to it? As, as somewhere where you can capture the most amount of people. So say you date in, in Glasgow, you're not going to get the people for Greenock and Paisley mm -hmm. and everything. So like, who was it you say? Was James it? Dockery. James Dockery. So he's right, you're not maybe just getting up in the morning, oh, fire doing, grab my methadone or whatever, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to score gear and then I'm going to travel all the way to wherever it is in Glasgow and I'll just rattle all the way there and I know. and hope for the best. Nobody's doing that. But right. your hope would be if it works in Glasgow, then they go, right, worked last year, we've got an extra bit of right. funding, we'll date in Greenock. Do you right. know what I mean? We'll date in Paisley. We'll date in Dumbarton. No, do you know what I mean? And then and not just there, then you'll maybe get in Edinburgh, maybe get in like, like Perth, Dundee, right. all the places that are are really struggling with sort of high rates of addiction, high rates of hospitalisations uh, through drug abuse, um, or drug use, sorry. It's just anywhere um, there's poverty anywhere, joining to it. Anywhere there's, anywhere there's poverty and anywhere there's fucking nothing else to do with your time. Aye. So do you think, if you, if you like, take you back to, like, your your childhood, and just imagine there was, like, safe consumption rooms, uh, uh, maybe kind of uh, uh, organisations, charities getting in, um, and getting in about these guys, do you think they're, they're, I mean, obviously, if you save one person, I always say that, I always say that's enough. Mm. But do you think that would have been <laughs> something that could have changed it? Because it was a huge problem, wasn't it? Like it, it, when it, in, in your house Listen, and stuff. Was it, we were the heroin and AIDS capital of Europe. So um, at the time, but I, I don't know enough about that era. Like Aye. I was, I was there as a young boy for it, but I wasn't. I wasn't on like the scene, if you know what I mean. I, I was you. like, I was a wee guy that was going to school and then at the weekend drinking with my pals in the park and just causing havoc that wee boys Aye. cause. Like, I, I wouldn't even know. So it was kind I of normalised to you? Aye, like, you didn't I, know it was normalised, you would see it, but I wouldn't even know if I wanted to buy 
the hair on, I wouldn't know where to go for it. Like, Aye. it's not like I would, do you know what I mean? So it's normalised, but it wasn't it in your face in the sense that at 13, 14, if you say to yourself, oh, like, do you want to go and buy any drugs you rather than hash? Aye. I wouldn't have been able to say to you, like, hey, like, we'll go so and so up there, sells so it, we can go there. You kind of knew who the drug dealers were. Aye. You knew who the, the big, there was two or three big families that ran all the drugs. Aye. So you kind of knew what, what you got to do, pull them over, but they're driving down the road, road in their Range Rover Sport and go, oh, <laughs> what I get is a score bag, mate, like a fancy <laughs> trying heroin for the first time <laughs> on my way to school, do you know what I mean? So it wasn't, it was, it was there, it was present. You would, like I say, you would see the, the paraphernalia, the, the burnt foil and Aye. the... And needles you would have. Everybody had a member of their family who was a heroin addict. Aye. Everybody, so you know. You, you, like so, what one. do you think? How obviously, and I obviously was in prison with you, John, and I know how well you done kind of stay away from drugs and stuff like that. So, how, how, what was yours? Was there any kind of thing that you can put down to go, that's how I never went, took that route? I think the, the stigma attached in North Edinburgh to heroin because of train spot and um, it kind of, I know amongst all my friend group, and say, I don't know, as a sort of teenager, we, we ran about like a, a gang, a sort of young team or whatever they, they're, they're called, and they'd be maybe at the weekends 40 or 50 or so hanging about. I can't think of any of them that ended up on on a heroin. Is that right? Uh, right? That's not, none of them that I can think of that I know now. Obviously, Aye. there's some of them that have moved away and they're doing their own thing and Aye. I've, I've no contact with them whatsoever, but all the ones that ended up in prison, some of them that you know yourself, Aye. Um, that were from your house, um, none of them were on heroin. None of us took it. Um, none of us, as far as I know, I never tried it, but in prison, I Aye. didn't think any of them even, even you tried can it. You, can you put, obviously, it's a really hard question, John, I know it is, but can you... Can you put a kind of hanging on it? Why? Oh, why? Right. Uh, the stigma, mate. Like, why, the would, stigma? why would you take it? You, you've seen the the damage it done Aye. to, like, I had a couple of uncles that took it. They're like my dad's cousins, but they Aye. called them uncle. A scheme, a scheme uncle, do you know what I mean? Um, that were on it. Um, and you've seen the way it wrecked their lives. Like, it, it wasn't unusual to have a pal who had, like, an uncle who died of AIDS. You know, or a, an auntie died AIDS or a, a, their dad died AIDS um, one of my best pals growing up his, I think it was his dad and his two uncles all Aye. died AIDS and they were all really bad on the on the gear um, so uh, you've seen what it done to people and there, like, there's no there's, there's no better education in life than experience so when you're Aye. there and you're, your pal was greeting because his dad just died and you're kind of like oh fucking hell like that so do you think uh, like Irvin Welsh when they kind of wrote Train Spot and then obviously they came out and then there was lo was it Looking After Jojo was that the other one Looking After Jojo's based on like one of my best pals granddad's like some of the stuff Aye. that's is you it don't, I, when you read the newspaper I mean, articles yeah, and that um, so, so we boy you know I'm not going to say his name on here but you know him he was an Adiwell Aye. so do you think programs like that do you think they were like um helped kind of you guys cause it caused a bit of stigma I like you nah, you listen you didn't need train spotting to tell you that you just seen your best pals die with, with the gear i know you didn't like do you know, no, you know didn't need some guy to bring out a book to, to tell you what your experience was that opened it up to everybody else to go oh, for fuck's sake there must be right bad there Aye. do you know what i mean but I, I didn't need that to be going into school to be told that Oh, so and so's not going to be in this week because he's fucking his, his dad just Aye. died with AIDS. Or do you know what I mean? I didn't Aye. need Irvin Mills to tell me that. I think what his book done was was really shone a light on it for everybody else, mm -hmm. and and not just in, in Edinburgh, not just in Scotland, but like not worldwide. Worldwide, definitely. They go ah, like Scotland's what a really really bad thing here, and I didn't think looking after JoJo's as widely known no. as Train Spotting. Um, but it it's should just be. As good. It aye, should be. Aye, it, it definitely should be. Um, and if I find anybody listening has not seen it, then I would, I would definitely go on the internet and try and find it. Aye, I mean, try to get that before, and I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, it was a really good. It was. A, I can't even remember. But it was like. It was, it was like a Channel a, Four thing or something. Or? It was either that or BBC, and it was like a, a four part. Thing aye, it was really good. I remember. And I really enjoyed it. Robert Carlyle and. Aye. That, aye. Um, so kind of moving on taking you into your kind of teenage years and stuff, John, obviously, I know you kind of had stuff with the law and stuff like that. There was obviously things going on. When was your first kind of um, involvement with the law and stuff? When 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 did that kind of come into play? Um, I can't really remember. Like as, as a 
I guy at high school, or, or a wee, a wee boy at high school. I stayed in, in sort of Grant and in Pilton, Aye. but all my pals stayed in Muirhouse. Aye. And so I remember my dad telling me, I used to hear about, nobody knew that I was real long there, but like my aunties and uncles stayed on there and I would go along to their house and that, but um, I remember my dad saying he used to drink in a pub called The Gunner that was in Muirhouse. It's knocked down now, but he used to say, I always heard about a wee guy called McGee Aye. that was running about doing Aye. stupid Aye. shit, but he thought I was hanging about all night Pilton and Granton. And, um, and it's not that far, but when you're like, the world, world seems a lot smaller place now where it's like just tough, like the next scheme or two schemes away isn't it that far. Aye. Back then, you, you kind of, you, you were born, you lived and you died Aye. within a square mile. Do you know what Aye. I mean? Like all your pals and that stayed within a few streets, whereas I, because of the high school I went to, I hung about a couple of schemes away. Aye. So my dad was hearing about this wee guy, McGee, that was running about causing fucking havoc and he thought it was just some other <laughs> other wee guy. You didn't, you didn't associate the two because like, I think it was like my dad's, my dad's dad, I think there was like 13 of them brothers. Aye. So there was like McGee's Loads dotted about ev like everywhere at one point. So, and maybe still is, I don't know really go down there anymore. But, um, aye, my dad used to always say like, oh, like I heard. So anyway, I, I didn't, I can't even remember when I very first got in trouble with the law when the police actually caught up with me. Um, I take it was quite than, a rough scheme, but it was like aye, all that stuff like, was happening. Wait, like, I think the first time, the first time I badly hurt somebody um, in a fight, I think I was like 12 or 13 after the ice rink. As young as John I, I, These oh. older guys went and attacked me and a few other boys who I went to the ice rink with. They must have been about 16 or 17. I think we were like 12, 13 in the battered one us outside the ice rink. Chased the rest of us through... A, a school that's up the road for the ring, it's Mary Erskine School. And as we've come through the back yet, the older guys from Muros so that were, were all there, Aye. they were all like 17, 18 Aye. and that as well. So as the, the first few boys I've got round, one Aye. of the boys who they had battered their little home was there with his face all burst and these guys have come round Aye. and they've been like, ah, it's fucking one of them there. And obviously all hell's broke loose, everybody's been fighting and Aye, that was the first time that I'd ever done something like really quite bad Aye. over the top to somebody. So did... Looking by, obviously, that the gang culture we grew up when the gang culture was quite hanging. I think Graham Armstrong's just bringing out a BBC uh, four part show about is the other gangs coming back, like is there gangs still still about and stuff. And I've certainly seen um, it's been kind of a recurring issue that we've been talking about that, that, that the gang thing could be coming back. And it was obviously just one of the things when you were growing up you were for a different area you couldn't go to that area you couldn't go it was just that's the way it was mm -hmm. like when when i was at school as well john but i can't remember any like like police i can't remember being taught any like there was no there was no really any nah just... so i remember growing up a uh, pulton and your house had quite a bad hangy there's a road that divides the two the two areas I know it's um, so stupid, isn't it? Roads and bridges, you think? Uh, well. <laughs> uh, so that's dual carriageway, Penwell Road divides the two bits and Pilton and Muros used to fight on that or fight on the field. And every now and then somebody would get quite badly hurt and they would, um, once or twice, like the local, used to be, used to call them the students, it'd be like local university students would be doing there, a sort of sociology student right. would be doing like a thing where they'd come down and they would work at the local youth centre and they'd right. be doing a thing where they'd be trying to get these guys out of trouble, realise it's a fucking lost cause and within a year they'd be away doing right. whatever the sort of middle right. class wanker jobs that they ended up getting. Right. But they'd come away doing and every time something bad happened they'd come in a minibus and they'd get us and they would try and start taking us away. Right. And I remember one time, one summer it was particularly bad, I think I was about 15, in the post and I ended up coming down and getting a, and I think this was maybe the first time I'd been kind of lifted. Right. And they got us and they took us up to Craig Royston High School. And um, basically I sit down sort of hang like this with both sides with this. Aye. And he needs to stop. And I think they end up doing some sort of programme where they were taking guys away. I never done it. But um, where they were taking some of the guys away and they were doing like team building exercises and stuff. So it's similar to like the violence reduction unit? Can I aye, the violence reduction unit. Aye. Um, I don't know if that's exactly what they do, but maybe... Maybe similar to that, but it, it kind of stopped it for like that year, right. and then the the want for for doing it again kind of drifted, right. and within a year we were all back gang fighting and 
Aye. and like, battling each other. But the first time, so it was maybe the first time, aye, the first time I was in serious trouble, I think I must have been about 17. It was the first time I ever got remanded. Aye. And, um, That's the first time you are in prison, John? My f first time in prison, aye. Um, Where's that, Pullman? Eh, no, Sockton. Sockton. So back then, why well, I used to get kept in Sockton until they were convicted, then you would get sent to, to Pullman. So even as a kid, like 17, you were oh, sent in Listen, there was wee guys in there at 14. So it's mad. So see the wee, the wee guy I was talking about, who's, his granddad was Aye. one of the people for the thing he, he was in Adderwell with us. He was actually the reason the first time I got sent to prison. It was him that actually done the thing. I never done it. And I, was, I actually lost my Bitcoin apprenticeship for it. And I was like genuinely innocent. Aye. And then when I was in there, he was he's a good few years younger than me. Well, he was 14. Aye. And he come into prison as a 14-year-old. God. Um, and when's that? When, what year's that then, John? Oh, so one. Oh, one. Oh, one. So they were still putting 14 year olds in adult jails back Listen, then. I remember. Oh, okay. I don't know what you are hanging for saying names in that. Like, we, we Rab Jack was 15. Aye. You can just bleep it out if you didn't want in it. Rab Jack was 15. Jamie Highland, I'm sure, was 14. Uh, the wee boy I'm talking about, David Bell, he was 14. Um, the first time I met him, I think we, I think Wally Brankin, do you know him? Aye. I think he was like 14 or 15. I mean, Lord Turnbull, I've brought this up a couple of times <clears throat> on the episodes, but his guidelines are now, is don't put anybody under 25 in prison if it's no needed. Um, mm. Because obviously the, you kind of, mm, the, the way, the way, the way, actually, the way right. you kind of learn, and I think it's actually a good guideline, but it doesn't seem to be getting followed as much um, as it was. But... What's your ideas, John? Because I know that you're, I, I, I could listen to you all day and these kind of topics, you're really clever on these kind of things. What do you, what do you think happens when you're a 14 year old and you're kind of sent in, or a 17 year old and you're, you're put into this environment? Oh, mate, it's fucking terrifying, to be honest with you. Like, I don't know what it was like for, for anybody else, but I, I hear in, in shock for some people, it's like the first time they've ever been away for their mum and dad. Definitely agree with um, that. Um, dumped right into a very toxic, violent, aggressive, undercurrent of violence every day, every time you wake up. Um, and it's a real sink or swim environment. Do you know what right. I mean? Like, it's very unforgiving. Definitely. Um, especially as a wee boy, so the vulnerability. Um, you've got... And it's sad because I think if... I think if I never managed to... If I never managed to sort of cope that first time round, mm -hmm. I think it would have been, uh, like, I don't know if I would have ever been back. Right. But then you go in and it's just like all the older guys for your bit. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they're all, they're all kind of brand new. They're all, Aye. you go in, they're like, oh, do you need anything? At the time it was phone cards, they give you some phone cards. It's like, um, I help you out if you need know, like whatever I mean, you needed. I, they, would I, I, get, they would get you and you're like, this actually isn't a, it's not really that bad, do you know. know what I mean? It's like, oh, all the boys are here, but there's also been times where I've been in places and I've been the only person for, like, my bit and only, sometimes the only person for Edinburgh. And, like, you've seen how I conducted myself, like, like, I, like, I, I didn't, I rubbed, the, I rubbed the wrong people up the wrong way, usually, yeah. wherever, wherever I went. So I think if all the bad experiences I ended up having, I didn't think I would have had if in the very right. first instance, if it was no. No, I agree, John. You're 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 really clever. Like you're fit, and obviously, like your academic kind of um, journey kind of tells 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 the tale of that. So I agree with you. But for me, I remember just going in, and again, it was terrifying. Um, it's just I like the, the whole atmosphere of shouting, and and one of my my pet hates is when the the media get somebody on that goes, ah, oh, it's a holiday camp. It's like uh, it's I, far from oh it. Oh god, it's like <laughs> I go, I go, why do they put these people on camera? Because it's making the public think that prison's easy when it's really no. hard and it changes so much. Of you as a person. He, like, I don't know if you remember one day in Adderwell when we were going up to education on, on the way to education. It's like three people got slashed Aye. on the way on the way there. There was one at the bottom of the stairs at, uh, outside Tay. Aye. A boy got nipped and then we went through the doors. At the Aye. metal detector, a boy got done, we went upstairs. Aye. And as we opened the door, the boy was coming flying through. Imagine Aye. that happened in a holiday camp, that happened in Butlins. Like be, how long do you think it would stay open for? And it's, I, spoke, I spoke about the first time that I seen real... Somebody getting, uh, somebody getting like violently slashed in Pullman, and how terrifying it was, and how 
how I seen how normal it was to uh, people, yeah. and it, how the the environment, like the the, the officers or, or the screws, whatever, were running about trying to kind of get everybody dubbed up, mm. while everybody else was kind of just watching it. Um, and I remember going, and even the officers are having to laugh about it. I know. Do you know what I mean? Like even ah, the times they they do that. Oh fuck! Here we go again. That's fucking fucking oh, wonder. This is going to end up traumatized as well. Do you know, I've always said that they're conditioned, traumatized. Human beings um, like anybody else, exactly. and if you're living in that environment for that long, they're only going to end up one way. But just going back to like what you were talking about um, earlier today, with like the drugs and that growing up and the sort of what early sort of things could have kept me away from that or whatever it was. See, when it comes to, like, the violence and stuff like that, there was so many early warning signs that somebody somewhere could have been like, that That boy's got issues. Do you know what I mean? That boy's got something that we, could, we should be stepping in. Aye. T- today, today mm-hmm. something, and it would never have... I, I didn't... I genuinely think it would never have ended up like where it was where I ended Aye. up. Um, obviously killing somebody in a gang fight. Right. Um, like you're talking, you're talking before that. Like I'd been accused, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about things that I've done, but I'll talk about things that like the police have accused me aye. to kind of show you the kind of environment that you were brought that, up. That was, aye, that aye, was aye. so. You're talking because there was times like, and just because I got accused, I'm not saying that I've done it to try and be like, oh, I got accused and hanging. No, there was times I was sitting sure, in prison, like, right? Aye. Um, this happened to me on two separate occasions and my mum's doors went in both times I was remanded for two different Aye. things at different times and um, one time my boy had been stabbed along at the shops at Muirhouse and Aye. they've went to my man's house searched it looking for me looking for weapons and that and my mum and dad are just sitting not saying anything because they know it's not me because it just happened that night and um, they were like, so where is he then? Fucking, you, you must be hiding him in that and my dad was like, if you don't know where he is then I don't know what to tell you as you're only doing your fucking job, right, kind of thing. Right. There was things like that, right? And then you're talking, so even right then, the police are saying, no only have we got him in jail for the things, we suspect that this is the kind of thing he's up to even Aye. when he's no about. Aye. And then you've got, so that was in 2002, 2003. In 2004, I was accused of an attempt to murder. And in 2005, they accused me, like, I'm not going to say how many, but it was, Aye. like, a lot of attempted Aye. murders. All the one, like, not Aye. all the one time. It was, like, there'd been a bit of a back and forward with this Aye. other gang. And um, during that time, I also got stabbed. I got, like, some bad things happening to me. Um, and there was a lot of sort of tit for tat. And um, like my, I've got like a big scar on my hand. I can't write properly or that. I got set up in a house. Right. Um, these two asses invited me back to a house, and I went back with them. And somebody said, "Is where my shit that was hiding in the house?" Oof. But um, so, so you, the were, you were knew. you were involved. I was in, involved like, in I, like a, I, I, mean, I was fucking being Ned. Do you know right. what I mean? I was running about doing stupid shit that whether or no that was me doing all that. Right. At the time, the police always thought it was I me, and nobody at any point thought. Do you know what? Did like nobody ever keep, step in and nah, say... Nah, nobody ever. One time, I never gave him the credit he hanged at the time, but PC Matthews, his name is, he was the, the sort of local busy. Right. And one time I'd been accused of... I can't mind what it was. I think it was either an attempt to murder or into, intimidate witnesses. And it was in 2003, and I remember him sitting there doing and being like, listen, like... I've seen you obviously Aye. growing up, coming in out of the station. You always escape all this with the skin of your arse. Mm-hmm. He was like, at some point you're no gone. He was like, you, like Aye, so you're a reasonable uh, hangy boy. Like, why do you not try this? Why do you not try that? And I was just sitting like, oh, fuck off. And that, like, fuck you. And then um, just being a wee dick, do you know what I, I mean? Know. And I think that was the only time that I can think of as any of them trying to sort of reach out to me and be like, John, listen, like, like, Aye. like smart enough or you're going to end up in the jail for, like, for a long time. I know this is impossible, John, right? And I say this, I've asked this to, to <clears> a few people, but if you had a magic wand and you could kind of get, because this is what it's all about, it's trying to get a message out that this, these are the things that are happening in housing schemes, these are the things that are, are normalised and stuff. Um, and it's like, obviously, PC Matthews, this guy's tried to help you. He's not trying to help me. He's, he's that on that one time he's thought he's, I'm got to try and talk to this aye, boy. Aye. All the other times he lifted me and put me in jail quite happily. And all the aye. times after that, he, I don't know if he was just feeling kind of that day. Do you know what? I've got to try and talk to him because like, for whatever the reason was in his head. But they had never tried before, but he recognised something that was like, you know what, there's something not right here. 
but how did how did anybody else? So that that was then. But what I do know now, I don't know how the police operate. Um, for like what their policy is on Aye. these things. But I do know in a lot of housing schemes now, because I think you're, you've got to say, like, what can they do if I had a magic wand, what would they be doing? And I know that, like, in North Edinburgh, um, because of all the violent crime and because of all the car thefts and the motorbike uh, mm -hmm. crime and that, uh, there's, like, a charity called Face North who try to take all the wee boys off the street who mm -hmm. are causing, like, causing havoc. Um... And what they do is fucking brilliant. So they did at the, the peak times of offending. What are they called, John? Face, Face North. North. They were called Face North. They're called something else now. I've seen on Twitter that I changed their name. But um, aye, so they just registered a charity last year. And the, the job that um, uh, James and Kate... They, they need to get them on here, in fact. I'll speak, will, to, I'll 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 speak to James for you. So the the job that um, James and Kate did doing in uh, North Edinburgh is fucking brilliant. So the peak times of offending, they'll go and get the wee guys at seven o'clock, eight o'clock at night, off of the week mm -hmm. or at the weekend, and they'll take them away and they'll go hill walking, they'll go night cycles, they'll go fucking, they'll, they'll go to camping and they'll do, they'll do like fitness in the gym at right. night and all that just to get them off of the street. And I'm sure, I'm sure they've managed to, there, there was a, a noticeable drop in crime in North Edinburgh that, that was attributed directly to them taking all these Brilliant. wee guys off the, off the street. The problem you've got with that is, so what they're doing is amazing for, like, Pilton and Muirhus. Um, but then you've got, like, who's doing it in Nidri? Who's doing it in Mester Hales? Through, like, here, who's doing it in Postal? Who's Aye. doing it in, do you know what I mean, Who's doing Aye. it in fucking Cran Hill? Aye. Aye. Nobody's doing it in any no. of these bits, or if they are. So what, what, um, I was speaking to a few people about how things are funded locally. Aye. And what, um, what happens is the centres will get the funding to do a certain thing, right? So say the bit, my bit's called the Pilton Youth Centre or something, right? They'll get a bunch of funding quarter of a million, half a million a year, right? And to begin with, they'll have all these clubs, they'll have all these, all, the, all this good aye stuff aye. happening, and then the wee guys will cause trouble, and they'll go, nobody wants to deal with you, so we want their ones in here. Mm -hmm. They'll get all the wee good guys in, and then they'll be like, right, um, we'll run a night for you, and a night for you, but you are getting fuck all. And then instead of having it five days of the week, it mm -hmm. breaks down to four days of the week, three days of the week, two days of the week, mm -hmm. and you've got the manager will go, Oh, my niece has just finished uni. I'll get her and I'll get her a fucking mm. an admin job. Aye. There's 25 grand a year for you. There's fucking one of my cousin's laddies, I think, he'd, oh, we just finished uni, we'll get you in. So you've got all these middle Aye. class people are coming in and they're getting all the sort of middle management jobs. Aye. But it's taking up all the funding and then you've got all the wee guys back out in the street stealing motorbikes, Aye. back out in the street something doing the street, cars getting exploited for the older guys out there. Right. Some gear going on a long drop off at so-and-so, um, getting caught, and you could be laddies, 12, 13 year old, getting caught He's with fucking thousands of pounds worth of gear on them, drugs. Do you know what I mean? Aye. Coke, crack, I smack, and you're like, how the how, how is that wee guy? I, at 12 or 13, I would never have been in a position for no. somebody to say to me, I go know, and watch that empty gear. I know. Do you know what I mean? Go and hold that, that weapon for me while I go and Aye. while I kick about just so I didn't get caught with You've got these wee guys getting exploited and getting... I think Natalie was on the other day and what she was saying was, and I, I, she, she kind of talks, she was saying, she was calling them the OGs. She went, the way it used to be is there was the OGs there and they kind of schooled the young team. Mm. And I'll, I'll, even though it was like a set of rules that were probably were breaking the law and stuff, mm -hmm. there was still morals there. Uh -oh. um, what's happened is, is they've got rid of all the OGs now and it's the young team schooling the young team. Uh -oh. And it seems to be like like some of the things you're hearing about <laughs> you guys, that, as you say, is 12, 13 year old and they're getting caught with crack, big ounces of smack. I didn't know, I didn't know it, and that was, I was. Mm -hmm. really in prison like, like in 19 and stuff like that I'd never seen smack and all that do you know what I mean uh, um, I've heard about it and stuff but I'd never seen it um, so it's just like the, it's definitely getting younger and I think I don't know why they, 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 they make out as if things are getting better I don't see it getting better I don't see the big progress that they talk about nah so I I, I don't know what's happening elsewhere I only know what's happening in, in the area I grew up in and I think it go better for a while. So that's, you're talking about the violence reduction unit and I know they try to take credit for the massive drop in crime right. um, that happened. 
But that happened all over Western societies. So all over Europe, in America, everywhere for a while, violent crime took her. In some places, the dropping uh, crime in general was bigger and, uh, than it is. And there's a lot of research to back this, John. Aye, there's lots of research to back this up. Um, and uh, that was, uh, it's a well-researched sort of area, academia, that the, there was a drop in, in all crime. So what would you but say, what would you say that, that I d- was? I don't know, I, I don't know. The, cost of living, because it was like nah, a, a, good time, living. a good time, it was like, there wasn't as much poverty, poverty it wasn't as nah, prevalent. Poverty's always been prevalent, mate. I think there was a, a period of time where, so my, uh, going back a bit to like, um, being in prison, right? Aye. I remember, sp- I think I spoke to you about it, but I wrote to Glasgow University mm-hmm. about this PhD that I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, even back then, I hadn't even finished my first degree. And I wanted to look at the way gang violence had stopped mm-hmm. um, or been greatly reduced by the way people communicate on Facebook. and uh, it was So basically, you could kind of follow a, a what do you call it, like a... A trajectory, a trajectory, a trajectory aye. through um, social media where MSN and stuff, people were kind of, um, so this is like 2000 mm-hmm. onwards, right? I remember it. People were kind of using that to like chat up birds and mm-hmm. you have the odd, odd argument with guys and that on it, right? But you're mostly using it to chat to girls and people to mm-hmm. meet up and that. Then people come along and people were actively using that to promote gang fighting. Everybody had like a skin that would have like their local gang mm-hmm. name. People were arranging to meet up to fight. Um, you had people posing. Was this Bebo? Bebo. You had people, and my wee brother was one of them, so mm-hmm. my wee brother had, he's saying it was an imitation firearm on, on his Bebo mm-hmm. skin. And the police busted my mum's house looking for, mm-hmm. the, looking for the gun, but they, uh, they were looking... Aye. Like, and they, were people were, on, they were actively looking actively on people. Actively looking on. Aye, but people on people were looking Aye. on people for who to fight with and who, who to hang with. Right. And the polls come doing hard on it. There used to be all sorts of stuff, front page of the Daily Record and Sun all the time about uh, basically people on edge, so you try to hang out gang fight. And then Facebook and that come along and all that kind of disappeared. Mm-hmm. And Facebook and then at the same time you had like, um, you had a... Uh, Xbox Live and that come about PlayStation. Aye, that's why I've called. said. I've said that that was a big thing. Aye, so it was a big thing where, where people who would normally be disconnected started becoming Aye. connected. It's, Even though it's, they had more in common Aye. than they had out of common, and then you had people. It's uh, a virtual connection, but it's a still virtual a connection. connection. And that virtual connection, I remember phoning my wee brother Gary. That's not the one that was on Bebo. That I've got a middle brother, a younger brother. That was my middle brother. Uh, my youngest brother Gary phoning him and he was in Pilton and I was like why are you around there like, we're, we're for the other bit and he was right. like nah he was like my pals that I met on Facebook he was like I'm around at their bit and we're playing football and I was like ah he was like I were on the same Hibs fan page thing he says so well hang about and I'm like you can't oh, believe right. that Aye, I couldn't believe it I was like Hibs Hib-. like, aye cool so he told me about right. it and that's where the kind of original idea stems from so obviously the, t- talking about gang stuff and all that, and we've spoken about that. So, what what was your experience like in prison, John? Because I know you changed and you managed to change, and you <laughs> and you got a really good academic background. But what was it like uh, for you? I uh, see. So I, I think the whole that whole narrative of changes is wrong. Like I don't think anybody changes, right? I think if anything, you use your your experience and your your thing to manage your situation better. Right, you, right. you build the, the you build whatever that is the skills the tools whatever sort of buzzwords that they hang you to to manage your situation slightly better. So I think I'm still to me I'm still the same person that was going to prison all the times. All I've done is matured, and as you mature, you, your procl- proclivity for violence naturally eh, kind of drops away mm-hmm. by the time you're you're in your late twenties, early thirties. So people who are violent, you've got less sort of testosterone. The way you, mm-hmm. the way you act, the way you hang, you, both through your, both through experience and through the, your biological makeup within your body, that you're hanging towards violence, mm-hmm. dips right. So you've got that. Then you've got things like getting better educated. So, I so basically I'm saying that to say this. I didn't, I didn't think I changed as such. I think I grew up, I matured, I got educated, um, and I think that kind of made me look at the world differently so I've now got better ways of dealing with things do you mm-hmm. know what I mean so I still get just as angry 
as I did mm-hmm. back then we like whatever it is that's going on the thing is I, I still have the sort of intrusive thoughts where you're kind of mm-hmm. like like the way I used to deal with this I had to go fucking mental and you're mm-hmm. kind of like well Right. Yeah, you're like, but so do you you're a fucking it, idiot when you do that, and you end up in jail when you do that. So I think you're kind right. of still the same person. To me, anyway, like everybody's different. To me, you're still the same person. You've just developed sort of different coping skills and different mechanisms to go about your daily life with foot. Like, do you know what I mean? When somebody cuts you off at the roundabout right. without fucking falling them home and try to fight with them, or without, like, somebody right. bumps into you in a pub without going like, ah, oh, fucking smash you outside or whatever. You're kind of like, so you're, you're less violent anyway just by your age. So do you think, like, obviously, looking at your prison um, experience... Aye, so what was different, mate? Then? What thing you doing? Is that Aye, like, kind of what, what, what... So, you were obviously with me um, through quite a lot of my, my sentence, so... You're talking the first three, four years, I was just the exact same guy that was outside. I was always fighting. I was always looking for ways to get one up on the system. I remember at one time I, I held the record for being caught with the most mobile phones in Scottish prisons. I do, I do remember that. Uh, so, and every every time they would think, and they would be like, like how, how are you getting these in? Like, how, you didn't go anywhere, like, you didn't? And I'm like, well... It's like fucking look at your insecurity measures. Like I don't know, I can't do your job for you. You're getting fifty grand a year. Like you, you fucking figure out or give us more contact with our with our family. Aye. Um, the SPS has changed a lot since I think it's changed again. But the SPS has changed a lot since then. You did end up getting a lot more family Aye. contact and stuff. But at the time you were talking, it was like one visit a week. Sometimes one visit every two weeks, and you're away in the middle of nowhere, and you can't see your family. Of course, I'm going to have a mobile phone. Do you right. know what I mean? I've got like I had two young, two young kids. So for the first, in fact, my youngest, you know, my youngest daughter now, um, my second oldest, uh, Kiara was born while I was in uh, shots. I think I was in. Right. So of course, I'm going to have mobile phones and stuff to keep in contact with my family this was before they were illegal as well so it was just like I know I remember I got caught with one myself in Pullman when I was like away at the very start of my sentence Um, so aye so in the beginning of my in the beginning of my time in prison um, I was just that same guy I'd done what I wanted wherever I wanted I'd go to different prisons I'd be a fucking nightmare there they would send me to another prison and then I would just stay the same there and then eventually landed in Adibel when it very first opened um, and I thought it was brilliant the first year. It was an absolute free for all. Any, uh, no, it's crazy. I, it when was, you try and tell was, people about it, it's hard to describe. Aye, and when your headspace is in that sort of way of living, it didn't matter to me that when you were going away up to education, you'd see somebody getting slashed or battered. Or, I was so desensitised to it aye. that I was like, like, guy, this is this is but, my environment. Aye. Do you know what I mean? I can I can excel in this environment. And even when, like, I don't know if you remember, there was guys fucking putting contracts on me. I had like a five grand contract. Where the country saying, oh, like if you get on, like we'll do this and all that. And I was like, cool. Like I'll be at the gym the morning. Like aye. we'll see. And I had the same wee guy that was talking about his grand. I said, we David Bell. Aye. He would go everywhere. He was booking visits. When right. he didn't even have a visit, he'd book a visit and go, I'm, I'm coming to visit with you in case something right. starts. He, did, he wasn't into education or that. I'd be going away up to the education department and he'd be going, I'll come, I'll put my name down for fucking some class just just in case. So we go, we go away up to education. There used to be 10 people out in the library. Sign up for it with the full intention of patching it after six months. Right. Day the first module, patch it after six months and then I'm like... First couple of things I hand in, get all right grades, know that brilliant. Like remember mm-hmm. this, the way it works here, it's not the same as a conventional uni, but it can be transferred into it. So I was getting like seventy percent to maybe eighty percent, which is like a C, right? In a normal uni, I believe. And then I done the next module, um, that was a, a beginning module, like a ten point course or something. Right. And I done one of the bigger courses. And all my scores were like in the high eighties, nineties. I and remember. Stuff. And people were like, you're, you're a wee bit good at this. Aye. Then someday, somewhere, noticed that I hadn't went to school when I was younger. I had no exams. Hires. I had no hires. I had done no education in prison, really. 
I remember I, this. I done an, an end scene digital media and got no call, but that was like tried to get you go back, was didn't they? Well, what they say to me was you need to go back and do basic numeracy. You need to do basic um, con- uh, what the communications. Aye. Then you need to do a couple of hires. And so in three, four year time, we'll get you back over here, right? And I was like, I, I'm getting A's. Do you know what I mean? I'm getting if I was at a conventional university, I'm getting A's. I know. So why that are you trying to get me? So I had to that. appeal it. So I missed it on like one of the courses. Had to appeal it. And then I basically my appeal was just basically my grades speak for themselves. Like, you better get me back on this fucking mm-hmm. course, or I'm like, do you know what <laughs> I mean? And the way my behaviour was at the time, I think they were just kind of like, you know what, he's no caused any trouble in like six months. Like, but Aye, maybe he's doing well here. Maybe I got him. I'd been caught with phones and stuff, but I was no longer. No, I remember your about fighting with people. Uh, your I was no changed. longer. Do you know what I mean? I was no longer like being wide with the staff. I wasn't getting people to like sit out when, when things weren't going over. I used to just be like, and they'd just get locked up today, and then that would be it. We'd all be out like, oh, like, this cunt's fucking no well, but like, we need to stay out now. And, like, so I wasn't doing any of that shit anymore. So I'd found. Julie had found a way to channel my fucking all that Aye. negative energy into something positive. Aye. And before you knew it, I hadn't had a fucking misconduct report for like fucking three years, four years. Aye. And I was, because I was always like going away and reading and going away and, do you know what I mean? Aye. Like, and I never even noticed it. One day I was just like, I was, I was like, well, it was when, I can't remember what had happened. Somebody goes, the hurt down in the gym in Adewell, um, a boy from Abbott. And it was like between three of us who had done it. I, think, I don't know if you remember Aye. it, but we know who done it, it wasn't me. Uh, but they were kind of like, we need to ship three years. We can't have you all here. Um, so, I basically isn't like, um, we're sending you to shots, but shots gave me a compact basically saying if I behave for a year, they'll get me to my, my top end. Um, which top end is basically the, the last four year of your sentence. You need to go Aye. there for two years. Um, which you obviously know, but people are saying. No, no, I know. So, um, I was like, aye, I can do that. So for a year, I had this compact. Basically, I wouldn't get, uh, I wouldn't get phones in, I wouldn't get drugs in to sell, and I wouldn't get any, any fights. Basically, no, that's I what I did. I remember you changed. And true to their word, uh, shots within a week of that year had my way up to um, a way to green it for the top so end. Do you think? Up. See, like obviously the myth that I don't. Obviously, I, I know it's not a myth, but. Um, there's prisons that are better at getting you to places like shots at Glen Oakle. <clears throat> if you're in Andywell, come on, look, that it seems to be like as if they don't respect them or something. I don't nah. know how to explain So there's a national waiting list, I think. I think so. I think the way it works is there's a so basically what you're talking about is a progression system, Aye. the Scottish prison system, where in order to get parole, you need to be you need to have had some form of usually offender outcome work like Aye. constructs or drug mm-hmm. counselling or whatever your offence was related to then you need to do that and then order and then depending on what prison you're in you can get to either your top end or to Castle Huntley what's the open and what you're saying is you think there's local lists and that if you're in Adewell they didn't respect that local list they'll give somebody in shots the I opportunity over them is I that what you're say, saying? I would say there's there's, is that what um, you think or is that just what you think other people think? No, I, me personally, I think there's officers that have been in the game a lot more, that have got a lot more respect and shots that can get you through quicker if I you... I think you just know the channels. I don't think it's that they've got a lot more respect. I think they've got a lot more experience. So I think... Um, I think So I think there's a national list. I think so the way it works is everybody, as soon as you're ready to go, mm-hmm. goes on this list. And I think with regards to me, I maybe would have had to wait like three or four months. And I think someday maybe high up in shots has maybe been like, listen, mm-hmm. we've promised this boy and he's not done the hangy. Mm-hmm. Like we need to be, be being seen today what we say. Mm-hmm. Otherwise every other guy we promise it to, no I'll just kick off mm-hmm. basically. So I think that's what, um, I think that's how it works. Aye. But I might be wrong because I don't even know what happens at the other side of the... So you get guys in Adewell and Kilmarnock and stuff who actively move to shots in Glen Oakle because mm. they'll go, I'm no trying to move for here. Like, people <laughs> seem to get moved a lot quicker. And I, I, for me personally, I remember being in top end. I, I got moved for Adewell. And Adewell were actually quite good with me, mm. to be honest. Oh. Um, so I can't say, but I, I did see th- other things. And when I went to top end, there was definitely more people for shots in Glen Oakle, but... There's also more lifers and more 
hanging shots in Glint, do you know what I mean? Like, uh, so Adiwell's got a so lot of their short term like prisoners. That. So basically, there's a lot more people serving over four years that would be within the bracket to go to these places Aye. in shots. So it could be a myth. It could be a, it could be a myth, but what I would say is so Adiwell has quite a high turnover of staff. So very high. Very high, right? So as we all bureaucratic systems and prison is just uh, an example of a one, but anywhere has got shitloads of paperwork. So in order for you to get to these places, all the paperwork needs to be done. So when you get when you've got a high turnover of staff, shots and that they manage to retain all of their staff. Um, and the, a job as a SPS prison officer is seen as a job for life. People Aye. go there for school and they're there until they retire. Aye. Places like Adderwell, you had people that were coming for university and gone there, people straight for the job centre and gone there. You had some people who hadn't, couldn't quite make it in the SPS uh, right. culture and environment who would go the there. People f who couldn't make it as right. a police officer, people for the army going straight to Adderwell. So you had all these different people going there who didn't quite have the, the, the skill set to do all this admin right. work that, that's involved in hanging. No, involved agree. in getting people you away and then they would leave just when they've been trained up to date they would leave so what happens with a high turnover like that is the people who haven't even been trained properly because of the high turnover mm -hmm. are then having to train somebody else mm -hmm. to do the job that they only know half of themselves mm -hmm. so that could also be a a reason why 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 that happens so do you think obviously pro we're going away half here anyway but uh, I'm, I'm not really caring anyway but do you think that that privatisation of the prison system then is a uh, is is wrong, John? I I think the private private like I'm a socialist, so I, I know think, that I know. I, I think privatisation, yeah, almost anything is wrong. So no, almost anything, anything that the government should be in control, of, funding properly, and running for the benefit of the community. Um, Sh should be in the state's hands, if I you know what I mean. Be. The prisons are just a, an example of that, but Scotland are quite good at that. They just took, obviously, the um, rail back into uh, a, a public hands. But, like, look at look at all the private prisons done in England and that. Like, no. they're struggling. Prisons in general are struggling. They're not getting the funding that they need. Um, they can't even retain the staff that they need. They're not getting the training that they need. No. Um, and that's just multiplied a million times by it being privatised because the, the main aim in, in a privatised place is profit. The people that yeah. own it want to see a return on their investment. I said, next was a food company, I think. Uh, a so French why is it food running now? Prison? Do not, I like, think they run a few prisons now, but it's like, any, it's like <clears> anything like it. If there's a, if there's a, if a there's profit in it, then, then there's got to be hanging in. But you shouldn't be making, <clears> in my making eyes, profit off of human misery. Making, they're saying crime aye. doesn't pay. Like, crime pays if you're fucking in the right sort of tax bracket. Aye. And if if you've got the money to invest in either G four S vans or fucking thing, and you know enough people in the government to get your your contracts through, then you you've got to make money through crime. It's Aye. just it's just us at the bottom of it, um, and our families who are going through this misery. Aye. And then and like in Adderall, you're talking like you get like one, and and there's got to be people listening and it's going, I fucking quite right, fuck yeah, mm -hmm. but you get like one toilet roll a month Aye. and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then you're having to go about trying like try to trade shit for toilet roll and stuff getting do you know what I mean that like Aye. there's mad shit that happens in there where you're like no, there's not enough food to feed everybody so you have to f get m stuff on your canteen that's what happens when you privatise and what happens is the, 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 the weak didn't survive that do you know what I mean? No. The week didn't survive that. So somebody, like, you can say, I never missed any meals. Do you know what I mean? I had people <laughs> handing me money and, and I had, you know, I know what I mean? I'm a big lumpy old boy. I had money. Um, I was I lucky had, as well. Uh, do you know what I mean? We had families that looked after us, but you, you had people... No, I remember. I'm not going to say them like some of the, the real, really vulnerable Horrible. people they would get, and in halls like what we were in, you would have people like that asked that would be like, "You're not fucking bullying him. You're not taking his stuff. Like, leave him alone." Right. But there was places like TC. I was in there for like six months. So basically, what happened for there? I don't. Did you um, ever go to any of the reading groups? Aye. So we, we said I don't that. I started the reading I remember groups that, shots, aye. right? So. But I never got to beat the first shots when I got moved to Greenock in that time because the SPS made me the... They were effective? The they were really effective, mate. Is that still going on in the prisons now? Is there still people learning? Like, or is it kind of... Open university will still about? be a thing, but the reading groups are, are completely, completely done. So basically the reading group, so that was in shots. The reading group at one point were, were, were in four or five different prisons. They were for in Berlin when I was there. So they were in Berlin, they were in Cortonvale, they were obviously in shots. They were in Greenock when I was there. 
So maybe it was four. I, I, I thought it was five. Were they in Sockton, maybe? I don't know, John. Wherever they anyway, there were in at least four um, they, that we know about. And so when we were in Greenock, it was weird. So basically in Greenock, obviously in, in any prisons where there's male and female uh, prisoners in the same so uh, in, in the same prison, you're kept well apart. They, they didn't get anywhere near each other. And somehow we managed to make a case at Greenock to have a mixed class because mm -hmm. the women are kept taking Greenock Aye. off the stella. So we ended up with a mixed class at Greenock, which then led to mixed visits at mm -hmm. Greenock. So you would go down to your visits and there'd be mm -hmm. male and female prisoners there at the same time having visits with their family. How did that work? Um, just the exact same. Mm -hmm. You go to your visit, like like it should. Like we're, like we're not animals. I you know, know what I mean? The, the way the SPS and especially in Greenock, some of the, the way some of the staff spoke about us was as if we were animals and we wouldn't be able to, if we come near each other, they, they wouldn't be able to spot us up because we'd be so... Do you know what I mean? So sexually attracted right. to each other that we'd all be trying to fucking hang in in public in front of everybody. Right. Like some of the stuff they say was quite quite horrendous and so, quite aye, insulting and quite derogatory as well. But like it is what it is, do you know what I mean? You're a, you're you powerless, know. you're just a guy in you're prison and the birds are just like you, they just the um the, the We've spoke about me and James Dockery, me and Natalie have all spoke about the prison values when you go on the SPS website mm -hmm. and they've got their value system about like uh, how well they communicate, how well they strategise, how well they, they the, the value system they've got, um, equality. I don't see any of that. Um, and I think they're getting better. I'm listening I'm, and I know uh, it's a very hard job, John, right? Listen, so basically... To add, right, so to add context, right, so we'll keep, I'll, I'll come back to that, so we'll keep going through my education right. um, and then I'll, I'll come back to that, right, so we ended up having the reading groups, we ended up having them at Greenock, we ended up having like a few wins, see for like for, like for the people, for the right. prisoners, but we got uh, mixed visits, mixed visits were, were a big thing because running two different regimes it meant that sometimes you couldn't get a visit that week or sometimes within Aye. two weeks because the day your family could make it was the day it was a woman's and vice versa the women couldn't get a visit because the day it was their family could make it was a men's so people were getting to see their family a lot lot more Aye. by breaking down this stupid belief that we, we couldn't be around each other and for that um I ended up meeting like uh, Sarah Armstrong, who's now Aye. my supervisor at Glasgow, Professor Armstrong, she's my supervisor, former PhD. So what ended up happening for uh, home leaves and stuff, when I started getting community access, Sarah started taking me along to like uh, conferences and stuff mm -hmm. where I was taking, I was going to like, I've taught uh, the independent prison monitors mm -hmm. and stuff, um, uh, done sessions on like, basically on what it's like being on the other side and how mm -hmm. breakdowns in communications and stuff. It was quite cool. We invented this wee board game and we showed them what it's like. Mm -hmm. we, we left, on purpose, we left this group out mm -hmm. um, for the board game. Aye. And within five minutes, they started disengaging. They started, like, talking amongst themselves. They started being, like, sorry, these are grown mm -hmm. adults who are trusted to come into prisons. And so what my point was, so when you feel like you're not getting anywhere and the thing that is you're trying to do, you disengage straight mm -hmm. away. So in prison, when you're trying to get to uh, get your progression, to get out, to get your mm -hmm. pro, to get out early or whatever, you disengage straight away. Now, when you're a lifer, if you disengage, you turn a 10-year sentence into a 20-year, a 25-year well, sentence. If you, if you fling addiction into the Aye, through disengage. Well, that is addiction's the ultimate disengagement for, of for your hanging. Like, when you disengage, it doesn't matter whether it's through addiction, Aye. through other forms of mis misconduct. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, you disengage. And I was like, and you are like the people we trust to come in and help us. Mm -hmm. He's disengaged within five minutes, mm -hmm. and and so that was kind of my point there. And it's then, quite a good wee. Uh, it was a good uh, way to, uh, good to display guy. that, right? So there was other other things that that we done, but that was one of them. Then I started going and meeting like, uh, we started going. Sarah started taking me like, to SPS mm -hmm. um, engagement stuff mm -hmm. like at universities and conferences, higher and stuff. level stuff. Kind of. Aye, so I was sitting in a room with some of these some of the politicians and we hanging. I'm, I was on day release for prison. Right. And then at the same time, though, I was also studying. Well, take it back a bit. When I was at Greenock through Sarah, I actually got to work at the Centre for Youth and Criminal Justice. That was my right. my placement. Uh, 
clear light out or it was a woman who arranged that and she, she ran the centre at the time. I think great. Uh, do, do you know? I've done a placement in the CYCG as well. Oh, did you? All right, Aye. so I never knew that. So that must have, so that would have been after me because I was the, the first one. So she turned up at Greenock Jail and just knocked on the door and was like, I'm here to see John McGee and like, I want to see him now, kind of thing. So they come and got me through my Aye. cell and took my way down and there's, there's this woman for the public who's come all the way through no appointment and been like, I want to see him. She's lovely. Aye, yeah. she's so yeah. good. So like, so like just so genuine and so like wanting to help and so being like I tried email and they didn't right. answer my email so I turned up at their door do you know right. what I mean I was like oh that's pretty Bulgy. pretty direct I like right. thank, so, and thank fuck she did so she's done that got me out there I didn't really like the placement because there was a lot of sort of I don't know what your experience was you can tell me in a minute but for the minute I went in the try to give me the Claire was away on I think it was a honeymoon or something or a mm-hmm. baby had been born she was maybe on Aye, she was, she was t- I think she whatever it was away. anyway mm-hmm. so she's took me hey she's been away and this other woman I'm not going to say her name but she, she's took me and as you go down and round the side there's like two rooms it's like mm-hmm. opposite the windows Aye. and she's like this has got to be your hanging room here and I was like it's kind of like a cell it's not even as big as a cell I said mm-hmm. that to her Aye. I was like this is like a cell I was like this is like why am I tucked away for every day and it made me feel like, mm-hmm. oh, like, like ah, stick, stick the jail guy around mm-hmm. there until we can trust him kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, I don't know that. This is just where I thought to put you. She's like, it's a spare desk. And, and I was like, right, no bother. So I've sat down and I'm like, right away, I'm like, this is fucked. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? So she's obviously went away and spoke to somebody, come away back round and being like, oh, because you know what it's like, it's, there's an open plan bit. At the back. Uh, right at the back, aye, as soon as you go at the mm-hmm. lifts, you go round the bit, and then it's like, there's an open plan bit, then there's glass windows, glass doors aye, like that with the, with the rooms. Mm-hmm. I was round the corner for there, aye. a wee bit by myself. She's come away and got me, and she's been like, oh, like, sorry, like, I didn't mean that. There's like, the desks mm-hmm. are free, you could just go and sit there. So right away, I'm thinking, why was that not the first place you thought mm. put him in? But cool, like aye. fuck it, like I, like I'm I'm aye, happy aye. for the like for the opportunity mm. anyway. But then there was all mad shit. Like I was must have grew on that then, John, because when I went in, it was like Debbie and it, aye. and they were great. Aye, they were Debbie like, was there um, and that, but she wasn't in charge of me. But I'm not got. So what I, I didn't know what to say who was great and then leave out who no, the person who wasn't. So I was didn't want to talk about. I was at, to be honest. And so was this person that I'm talking aye. about. So like apart from this. So anyway, um. I wasn't allowed to go downstairs to get food or that. A couple of times I kind of go, but the, this person, um, so she was like, at the very beginning, my, did you know what the sandwiches are like? They give for the jail, they're pure or mouldy and all shit, so I would never ever take them. And um, and uh, in fact, they were probably right to treat me like this, but so what, um, she, she used to take me and she, she'd be like, I'll get you like soup in a roll or something Aye. if you want, right? And then one day I came in and she pulled me into a, a room and she was like, listen, I'm not buying your food anymore. I didn't get paid for it. I'm not allowed to take out of the petty cash. And I was like, I, I never asked you for, I never asked you for any food. I'm shouting myself because I think she's got to report me to the jail Aye. as if I've been exploiting her. Aye. And I was like, I never asked you for any of this. Like, like what, what have I done? Like, what have I, how have I offended Aye. you to the point we are hanging? So basically she was like, you can either eat your sandwiches and this is sort of, and this is the, she was like, or you can just sit there at your desk and sip your water like you, like you usually do when you've not brought your sandwiches. And nowhere I got the sip in the warm water thing, it was like for like the aye. hunger strikers and thing, aye, that's aye. what they used to do. When you're hungry, if you drink like warm water or aye. tea or something, it makes your stomach kind of, yeah. So I used to do that during the day if I hadn't had anything to eat because you would never had time for breakfast in the morning when you had a placement. So you just get out and you just aye. go straight to your placement. So you wouldn't, you'd wake up in the morning and no eat until you go back at like six o'clock. Aye. So I would do that to kind of stay off the hunger. So do you think of. that? And I so, so that kind of really, negatively hanged my experience of being there which was still it was still good there was Aye. a couple of things like that so I went for there um, for there I went up to Castle Huntley and then I applied to go to a university Aye, up there. there so I was, I, I was the first person to go for and that wasn't allowed went to know you the first no they told me no they told me no like two or three times I remember that and then they went if you can get a university to be interested in you then then you can mm-hmm. basically you can and I wrote to Dundee University and um, I was like basically I want to come and study there and Professor Cross his name is at Dundee mm-hmm. he's like the professor of law there 
he, he got back to me and he was like, we'd love to have you, we didn't care that you're in prison. We would love to have you here. So right. I went out for a meeting with him and he was like, listen, I didn't care it what you've done. It makes a big difference, doesn't it? I, see see it when you get that um, <laughs> empathy and compassion. I, I think that's what's lacking in the prison system. I, I've always said that, that division. <laughs> and as soon as somebody treats you the way they did in the CYCJ, uh, it puts your mind frame straight back into... I of fear and is, and that can I, people people don't understand the fear that you're see when you're on these placements and stuff the fear that you've got that the power that people have got over uh -huh. your life uh -huh. is astronomical uh -huh. um, so no I I totally agree with you John so Professor Cross gets you in and that changed because that then changed that opened up the, well I never realised so basically what happened was. Um, it, it changed for that time period so it was the first person to go to the like CYCG and to have like Aye. a university placement which they told me I couldn't have and I had to write to the university mm -hmm. begging for it basically Aye. and they come and they done it um, and then that's how also Greenock got the reading groups because I'd wrote to the university um, that almost cost me four more additional months in prison as well because there was a there was a governor called Wally Stewart and then there was a deputy governor called Colin Brody mm -hmm. and they had some sort of weird shit where they were like shitting on each other's ideas mm -hmm. and stuff and because it was this was Colin Brody trying to push push this through uh, Wally Stewart was trying to like throw obstacles in the way and it was just it was, it was really weird but I ended up getting to go but then Colin Brody one day I, I was off out no I had a home visit so you get mm -hmm. like be, it was the only time my parents could be there mm -hmm. so I took a, a home hang out on the day I was maybe at the CYCJ and that Colin Brody was waiting on me coming in and gave my address and doing in front of everybody and I was just like just take me off the placement like I didn't know what to be there if it's got to cost me more time I in know, prison so because it took so long to sort that um, basically, I was going to spend four more months in the top end, which would have affected my, like, aye, my stuff at Castle stuff, Huntley. So anyway, there was loads of stuff inside the prison and outside the prison that that really, really negatively affected. Then I went to Castle Huntley and they were like, oh, you're not getting to go into, you're not, you didn't get to go to university. The papers will have a field mm -hmm. day. But nobody cared. Like, I, went, mm -hmm. I, was at, you know, I was getting out every day at university. There may be people watching this now going, oh, that company's in my class. I never knew. It was a fucking <laughs> scumbag. You know what I mean? But that's what it is. It's done now. I got the degree. <laughs> so I went there to study law and I got the first degree, obviously, um, through the Open University that the SPS right. had tried to take away from me because I never had any hires. Um, got to go there. Uh, again against their wishes and with them try to stop Aye. it and then uh, for there obviously almost as soon as I go I think I go to 217 well I know I go to 217 and then in 2019 um, I done a master's degree at Glasgow University who incidentally they refused to have me there as a placement they not said I'm strong back mm -hmm. um, basically in case I went there and caused a scene and it affected their international standing because right. I think how they put it Um so I, they weren't very, they weren't very aye, supportive. Sport, they would aye. take, they would take me after the, after the fact. Mm -hmm. But what happened was they took James, James there, mm -hmm. um, afterwards, and then obviously the CYCJ took you. So obviously, like we can see that education's been a big part of your life, John. So mm -hmm. can you tell us a wee bit about <laughs> like your studies? I know you've done a lot of studies into a lot of different things. I so uh, I start. So my first degree was in social policy and criminology. Um, then I done a second degree, like I was saying, when I was at uh, Castle Huntley, uh, I done a law degree. Um, then I studied, I done a master's of research uh, degree at the University of Edinburgh, uh, University of Glasgow, sorry. Now I'm at the, it's kind of between the University of Glasgow and the University of Edinburgh. I've got two supervisors. The PhD that I'm doing now, the, doc the doctor mm -hmm. that I'm doing is at the University of Glasgow, but the centre that deal that works with the the kind of data that I'm working with is at the Hi. University of Edinburgh. So, um, my office uh, that I share with somebody is in the University of Edinburgh in the big Hi. old law. Have you been to the University of Edinburgh? I think so. There's a big old, old law Hi. thing. It looks so you Hi. walk you walk through this big arch and it's like you go back in, in time. It's like really really cool. So, um. Aye, so uh, I'm there doing a PhD and basically what is, uh, we're looking at building risk profiles of uh, people who are misusing drugs, who have accessed um, help um, 
and it's like tier three and tier four re- tier three and tier four rehabilitation services Aye. in Scotland, which is in the community or residential, basically. So it's kind of mo- most quite chaotic kind of ones, like yeah. you say. I don't know because you didn't get to see that, so I don't know. For tier the day I get to see tier three and tier, tier three, four. Tier four, so, like, I, so I think tier three would be if you've got a CPN, CPN in the community, maybe Aye. a drug worker or Aye. whatever, and tier four would be FM, your res- a residential um, thingy. So, um, and then basically I've got access to that data and the um, immortality data. Aye. So we're looking at building risk profiles of people who are at tier three and who have access tier three and tier four rehabilitation services and who have had contact with the criminal justice system. So the original PhD, which is what I got funding for, what I was supposed to be doing, was looking at the mortality rates of people who have come out of prison in Scotland. Aye. Um, and that was falling on for uh, somebody called Leslie Graham, who done it like a year ago. Um, I want to do a more updated version, but I want to bring in um, prison experience. So looking at people who have had loads of misconduct right. reports, who have uh, failed drug tests, who didn't get much um, money handed in, so they've lost contact with their right. family, they didn't get many uh, family visits. And I was hoping the SPS would be able to give me access to that. Um, so they were looking at vulnerable kind of ah, you're looking at we're looking at vulnerabilities, but based on how a person manages to operate the right Aye. the right through prison, because I didn't even know how many uh, friends I've lost that have come out of prison. I, um, I remember counting, and I was in double figures. Um, people I who I was who I'm people I was close to, and then you've got the people who you just I hear know. about. Um, I was in double figures of people who I've, I've actually sat with and who were my friends right. and then there's people who I was friendly with um, who have all died so that was something that, that I feel quite passionate about that I still want to do couldn't get the uh, the, uh, the funding for my PhD was only three years so I couldn't mm-hmm. get access to the the data in time mm-hmm. I'm hoping to do that as a postgrad for my actual PhD I got put onto someone else's project um, and like I say that's try to build risk profiles of these pe- uh, people and um, so that will be looking at people who have been in prison or who are still in prison, but also looking at people who are on drug treatment, treatment and testing orders, um, probation, uh, who have had like community based DTOs um, and stuff, uh, uh, the community based, based community stuff, orders, uh, and community stuff orders and stuff. So a wide range of stuff I'll be looking at now yeah. and try to try to look at are people more, more likely to die if they've got certain uh, maybe health vulnerabilities, people have um, access to help with their mental health or physical health or people so I'm what looking at what findings John? I what? can't tell you, so basically the type of, so I work within a thing that's called a data safe haven Aye. right and it's regulated um, through like various legislation Aye. right and I need to do all sorts of training to be able to operate right. there and I need to pass, like you get tested, I think the testing's every three years or something right. to be able to be a, a, a worker within the right. safe haven and in order to even talk about any of the, the findings, even any of the data, even if I wanted to tell you what variables I'm allowed right. to look at, um, I would need to get Consent. clearance. Now you need to get clearance for the data controller, the person whose data is, I'm sure it is, right. through a through a, a address which is Public Health Scotland. So basically I would need to do that before I can even say like oh like I know right. this or I know that. Um but like even that in itself coming for coming for a person who couldn't be like they couldn't be trusted to I don't know, they basically anything like that. So as, a, as a young offender, I was always in the Pullman and that, and I was always up to no good. I always had, like I mentioned, I always had mobile phones in that the earlier stages of my prison sentence and stuff. If you go to no being able to be trusted to have like a, a, any kind of job inside prisons, to now being trusted to work within a safe haven no, with this. It's, it's, ma- it's, it's, like, it's, a, it's massive, a massive achievement, a massive turnaround. Uh, but yeah. what I'm interested in, John, is. And I know you probably it's can't funny. answer this here, no, right? It's funny because I say that and you go, aye, that's great, but what am I actually interested in? No, like, that was no, shy. no, 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 <laughs> not at all. No, it's... I'm, I'm listen, kidding, Your journey's I'm amazing. I, I, honestly, it's an amazing <clears throat> journey. And you know how proud I am, I've but always said that. Thank you, mate. Um, but what I'm interested in is... Uh, 
what is the key jo- and I know it, it's yeah you've asked that a few things like what is the key see the thing is I think it's very difficult to sort of pinpoint anything so for me it was education me, me being able to get educated and me being able to meet the people that I need to meet to get to where I need Aye. to be but I've always been because of because of like my previous life, if you want to put it like right. that, before I went to prison and and um, I and the way I, I meet people and the way I'm able to sort of communicate with people and right. and um, really network, like I'm mm-hmm. quite good at networking. So because of that, I'm able to. Do you know what I mean? I was able to sort right. of get to where I need to be, but there might not be that for for somebody else. Like There's for some no people, one it's no one aye, so some people find God. Aye. Some people find God, and they really manage mm-hmm. to make something of their life when when they go mm-hmm. like look at Big Four. Like you, you would never think ten years ago that he would be the type of guy no, that would I be know. going about helping folk. Um, he's really turned his life around through, like, through like, that. Like, like, it's a coiny with the coiny. He's got the Paradise Recovery Cafe. Coiny for uh, post, 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 post And these are guys who I would never have thought would have changed. Do you know what I mean? So it's, you can never write MDR. I, but that's I don't think. I think that's always been in them. I don't think they've changed. I think coiny could have always been doing that. He's just needed the. I don't know, he's just needed the sort of the, either the realisation in himself. So I think he's still the, the old coin, eh? I think he'll Aye. still be the same guy when you go and try to have a laugh film or whatever. Oh, he'll is. still have no, the he same is. banter, still, the yes. same part. Yes. His relationships with his family is the same relationships that he had. Aye. The way the way the way he talks might be a wee bit different. Yes, it might not be as aggressive, it might not be different. Do you know what I mean? And that's the same with me. Like, the, the way I could, my, all my relationships with all my family are the exact same. Mm-hmm. I've not changed. I'm still the same dad, I'm still Aye. the same brother, I'm still the same cousin, the same son. Same I'm friend. the same guy, right? I'm the same friend. Is that do you Aye. so do you think I'm other than being a bit more bald, a bit more specky, do you know what I mean? Am I any different from no. the guy you met in NIC? No, you're still as annoying and uh, <laughs> <laughs> But do you know what I mean? You're Aye. the same guy and I just think there's, there's just wee things that change through maturity or whatever, but that, that's no you as a person. The you as a person, you're the same person. Right. Do you know what I mean? I, I feel, but so I might, you, I might be you, wrong. Because I, I, it's like such a, it's such a big change, John. It's, mm-hmm. it's like, a, it's, it's literally polar opposites what you've went through. Mm-hmm. So, and I know that's not going to happen for everybody, but this is the, like what, what, what we've been trying to do on or it's, some of the episodes is trying to like s- find where. The key is, and it's, I don't... So the key, so to me the key, key? right, no, so like, just thinking about what you've been saying there and thinking about what I've seen in prisons, right? So you've got David Martindale, right, who you maybe even want to try and get on here as well, right? So you've got David Martindale, who's brilliant at football, always a brilliant sportsman. I used to see him playing tennis, he'd play anything. He's like Terry Scott from Abbott. Any sport he turned his hand to, he was great. Went in the jail. I'm sure, I don't know if this was his trajectory, but this is how I remember it. He went in the jail for what he'd done and he never changed. All he'd done was took the skills that he had done, like Mm -hmm. his SFA coaching badges Aye. and all that stuff in jail which was it offer mm-hmm. they found something that they could harness which was his love for sport mm-hmm. and his love for football and his love for teaching and his love for do you know what I mean they managed to find something that he was good at and go we can do that with you right I think it's individualising somebody it's that, and and one size it. fits all doesn't fit doesn't fit anybody for anything what a one size fits all justice system we've seen how that's turned out if you try to have a one size fit all, fits all education system nobody gets educated because you're trying to do too much you're trying to do too many things for too many people that doesn't right. suit their, either their style of learning um, that, uh, when you look at a one size fits all justice system yeah. like what how how are they helping people by treating everybody the same everybody should know. have like an equal footing but harnessing my education and my, and my my first for knowledge yeah, and for hanging that I, stuff like that that's what it was for me imagine it if in there and I think they probably would have if you asked but in shorts if they were like that or Sean like you fancy trying to do podcasts or if you knew that that was something you could mm-hmm. do they've got a recording studio in shorts like I, I've been in it doing stuff um, that's something you could have done there they could have harnessed that this could, that could have been a, a route for you I know. Uh, prison the, the people that find uh, religion in there there's a wife for that and they really harness that in there there's a lot of so there's a lot of positives that come out of being in prison but I don't think it's prison that, that no, I agree does that you. do you know what I mean I think that's it's something the, that could happen in the, the community that it's, it's when that person <clears throat> comes to the, the, the realisation that they need to change or they need uh, to they, they find uh, something that 
that, that, that takes them away from that life uh, because the vast majority of John don't. The vast majority don't have the awareness or don't have the level of, I don't know if it's consciousness or something, but they just don't have... Once you, once you go down that vortex of addiction and stuff like that, in prison, it's very hard to come back at you. Uh, I, nah, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. And some of the stuff I've seen me legal highs at the later part of my sentence, and I believe that they're a lot, lot worse. So basically, again, like going back to like my end sort of route, I went in a... Uh, I ended up getting an internship with the SPS, Aye. so it was like working for the enemy. I was like, Aye. see that way where you're really conflicted and you're like, I got educated there, t- managed to like turn my life around a wee bit, but they're still the enemy. Like I've still Aye. got cousins in there, I've still got friends in there. I know they're getting treated, like they're trying to get onto their I know. placements, they're trying to, nobody's getting anywhere and I'm like, but then you, you meet them and you just realise it's like people just try to do a job just like you're just like you're trying to do a job. Not everybody can do everything. Do you I know, know what I mean? And, it's a and, hard job, and, let's be honest. And their funding's like being cut. Well, it's not being cut, it's been stagnated over five years or something. Right. So obviously as the prison population goes up year after year, they can't help if they get sent. The courts need to stop sending people because I think they're at 8,000 now. I know. Do you know what I mean? It's crazy. Um, and they, they've already showed during COVID what they can do because when COVID hit, they were like, so all the people that didn't really need to be in jail, we'll just stop sending them. And I was like, they got it down to 6,000 something. Do you know what I mean? Know. Levels of imprisonment that they've not seen in fucking decades. Overnight, they were able to go, you know what? All these people didn't actually need to be in jail. Do you know more than 50% of people that are on remand didn't go to receive a custodial sentence. So right away, all the thousands of people, you could already take out remand. More than 50, I'm sure it is. Um, and there's guys on remand who have been on remand for like aye, for a, a long, long time, time because of COVID, right? Time. So that's the kind of thing they can't really help. So the SPS they can't help who they get sent. Oh. They get sent to whoever they get sent mm-hmm. and they need to find space for them. Do you know what I mean? But the, you could help that by the courts being like, you know what? Like, there, there's a way we can deal with this. The SPS, though, you've got on. You, you find gems within the SPS, <laughs> but the vast majority uh, is still that. I, I go, I'll go on and I'll go on and on about it till, till I'm blue in the face. There's a there's massive trust issues between cons and between staff, and there always will be. You get gems that try and. <clears throat> try and nurture and try and fix that but so, I mean, how the, do you fix the screws in jail are just the, the people like anybody else right so if they've been in there for 30 year right and right. in there 40 year in there through the all the riots hostage taken like and that wasn't even fit like I, I've been in a uh, house where I know, I know. staff have been taken hostage I know. do you know what I mean and right. you're like so when all that goes on and then you're like that that's traumatic. Do you know what I mean? That's Very. the shit I've seen traumatic. So I've been diagnosed Very. with PTSD. No, I've, like I, I've do you know what I mean? I've been hanged. Um, got I'm waiting on a, a space. So we never even got the chance to go into like mental health and stuff mm. after prison. And how long have we even got left? Fifteen. Fifteen. So we're not going to get the chance to even uh, speak about that properly. Mm-hmm. But um, after prison, like it wasn't. A, I, we've been talking about this for the last hour and a half, hour and forty five minutes, as if my route was fucking flawless. Mm-hmm. Um, when I got out of prison, I, I was struggling mentally. Like I was back doing my bit, like hanging up, being around people that I really right. shouldn't have been. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm at the time I'm doing a master's degree or studying law and stuff like got to the public and right. saying like do you know what I mean like doing things that being around mm-hmm. people that I'm like at any minute I could go back to jail mm-hmm. and I think with my wee boy being born and I started kind of being like what, like, what the fuck am I playing it but I was still struggling to sleep at night think it's a safety but, thing John when no, you, you feel as if that's where you belong Aye, so I've always, so that's one of the things, I've always had a sense that I didn't belong, so anywhere, so I didn't think, I, I didn't feel like I belonged as part of any group growing up, I was yeah. bullied quite a lot, I think that was quite a lot today with how I ended up being really violent, um, and I think that was like, a, it became like a defence mechanism, and one of the things I'd say, like I never ever, I never ever done anything to somebody who wasn't either trying to date to me first or who I thought was a threat. Right. So there was always some sort of, I was never one of those sort of, see you get the guys that hang about with you when you're younger and they could attack somebody in the street Amazing. and you'd be like, what'd you do that for? Mm-hmm. I was never one of those types of guys, right? So I was always with the guy you, that you met in jail that if I thought there was a threat, I would go and address it. Mm-hmm. And I would address it swiftly um, before something happened to me. And I think that's how I survived 
Like right. I'm one of the guys that go into, go into trouble and every day I was in, come out with no extra, right. additional scars. Right. Um, and every day take second prizes, I was in the no, hangy, no. do you know what I mean? But I, like, I managed to get through that in one piece. Aye. But no everybody, obviously, no, 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 no everybody does. So many people are, are, are But I always felt like I didn't fit in. So every, any hall I went in, like I didn't ever feel like, oh, this is my hangy, and then I got out. I didn't fit in in universities. I didn't feel like my, uh, you get put in like PGR groups, mm -hmm. like your cohort for uh, postgraduate mm -hmm. researchers. Didn't fit in with any of them. My life experiences are different. Um, and I didn't feel like I, I didn't like, to feel like I fit in with them basically mm -hmm. and then at home when I go I didn't feel like I fit in with like the people from my area that I grew up in I didn't fit in with them before I went away I didn't that's why it was easier for me I think to break away from them all Aye. and be like hanging. so I didn't think it's a safety thing to get back to your Aye. question so I didn't think I fitted in with them in the first place and when I got out I didn't fit in with them but it was all new mm -hmm. they were all new so until I managed to start building a life for myself way having like other, like other people for other walks of life right, that I could call friends that, aye, like, like all people aye, aye. like that um, like we started up a rain group Spark Scottish Prisoners Advocacy and Research Collective and that really helped me sort of break away from the thing you would meet up regularly um, and it was a whole different way of living so when I was talking aye. to like people for that group and you'd learn about their life and you'd be like what like aye, aye, so aye. Just, aye, do you know what I mean that's how you're, you're supposed to live so and, and meeting people where that undercurrent of poverty and the risky yeah. violence and the, the, the yeah. whatever, do you know what I mean? Like being able to like but move your life forward. People can't understand that. They that, can't, that people person. didn't understand things like, like well, I've spoke to people at universities and that's like, my mum worked at, a, at the local primary school and she used to steal like the wheat abix that right. were for the burns and the, the milk, right? And we'd have wheat abix for like, two or three meals of that day or what I mean for days Aye. and we were living I was I was rare that I lived with both my mum and my dad so I didn't stay in a single parent household um, and both of them worked full time they always worked all had jobs and the, they were criminals on the side they were always up to doing credit cards there was always like other shit happening Aye. And we, st I still lived in poverty. Do you know what I mean? I was still Aye. that guy with the holy trainers who got to school we didn't go to school if, if, at the end of the summer holidays Aye. until my mag got paid in September so we could get a uh, new trainers and school quiz and that would be my quiz for the whole year we'd have like two outfits Aye. that would kind of rotate um like so I'm you're a product of the environment I Aye, so I'm, I was even rarer in the fact that how the fuck are you growing up in poverty when you stay with both parents they both got full-time jobs mm. all right jobs and they're doing credit card fraud every now and then and whatever and in the later years uh, growing up there's like drugs being sold and there's like other shit going on and that I'm still fucking got to school hungry do you know what I mean how mm. the fuck you got to school hungry when I know. There's, there's all all this money coming in obviously there's things like um there was addiction issues Aye. in my house, both alcohol and drugs. Um, and um, you didn't, didn't think the bingo was a gambling addiction, but my mum was at oh, the bingo definitely. every single night. Definitely. And like, and the drugs was my mum, it wasn't Aye. even my dad. People assume oh, it must have been your your mm -hmm. dad or it was, it was my mum uh, that was taking like, prescript loads and loads Aye. of prescription Aye. drugs, buying them on the black market or whatever. So I like... Um, I just think that your story is amazing, John. I think it's um, such a unique... And I think that's hard. I think that's why it's hard for you to like even be somebody that can go. This is the key, or this is because it's so um, it's unique. Um, you, you've came for like an environment, your product, an environment where you've been um, violent and stuff like that for for poverty to actually go into the higher it kind of entry lot of education, uh, which is. <laughs> Phenomenal. That's what I mean. Like teaching at university, like going and teaching at like the University of Glasgow, and then or I've, I've, I've uh, done like guest lecture and like up in uh, Aberdeen, up Aye. in Dundee. Um, I work. I've got work in an office at Edinburgh University. Do you know what I mean? Like how uh, these spaces were open to people like us. I never. I remember saying to Julie Thompson at, at Adewell, um, and she was like, "Oh, I'm about doing a degree," and I was like, "No, no, no. Like I'm feel like here, there. You didn't. I didn't Aye. know anybody about university. Aye. Never mind. Did did, did they?" a master's degree and then got to be a doctor I'll be the first doctor that I know I, I was know. the first person in my family with a, 
and maybe my cousin Ellen was I don't know but it was between the two of us Aye. we had an actual degree Aye. nobody went to university nobody even went to college do you know no, what I mean no. um, and, that, and that's growing up in that environment of poverty and stuff you didn't you didn't aspire no. to that because nobody done it before you you aspire to be a drug dealer bricky. Or, uh, or a bricky really, do you know what I mean you get, get a trade or, or sell drugs that's kind of your two your two options very few make it in sport football, but something football like. you want to dare it rather than from my but made it in football but other than him I didn't know anybody else who made it in sport and even good players there was a few guys that were really good for Edinburgh I know a couple of guys <laughs> goalkeepers and stuff like that who uh, played for Scotland and stuff uh, and they because of the, the, the poverty they were in they get stuck in that life do you know what I mean uh, and they're like good boys that are just stuck in uh, and it's trying to explain to people where, where we need to bring so much more lived experience and a you do so see at the later end you need to live the experience but see at the, the, the start all the funding for all the see all these we guys that are into sport that are good at boxing mm -hmm. like Big Fundo who just Aye. died like um, a month or two ago right Aye. guys like him who are great, good at boxing guys at um, uh, guys that are good at football like you're saying there's other guys there's other sports like guys like, I don't know I'm not a sports person but no, I'm assuming that, that you've got to get people that are good at everything you've got guys that are good at music you've got guys that are good at fucking like guys like guys, cars, uh, like guys, aye, guys, guys that are good with education, guys. Show them how to, how to fix cars aye, how and how stuff. Cars and fix. Stuff, so you've got all that that can be harnessed in the community before they even get to the stage that they're in prison. That's what Face North are doing. I forget that their new hanging name, but that's what they're doing. Right? Look them up and, and I'll speak to I'll speak to them on the way home. I'll actually phone them when we're in the car going back, right? But you've got things like that, and if you make sure the funding isn't going to all these all the creating jobs and for middle, middle class, class wankers, right? Who are coming in straight to uni, getting these jobs to these youth clubs and that they're not doing it and no if they are they've them. not got the lived experience to go do you know, know what that's thingy the, wee guys the, don't listen the to boys that run face north are fair or bit Aye. you know what I mean they're fair of a scheme and they know I've who all the people are and they can Aye. turn up at your door and they'll know your mum and dad and they'll be like we need to take them because he's Aye. causing fucking havoc we want to stop him from getting to jail that's something that can be replicated everywhere if the funding's right and you get the the, 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 the people right the people Aye. who are around, sitting around the table right and that, that, that can include the polis that can Aye. include local social Definitely. work if it's we need to come together if it's to a heal. mutual if it's like a mu for a mutual benefit of the community mm -hmm. if it's no seem like a, like the police are they, they deal operationally Aye. so it's like they'll be like oh like this month we're like get all the big guys off the motorbike we've not got time to help you run your Aye. thing you, you, they, they need to come away for their way you're thinking but we need to come away for our way you're thinking totally. we're, do you know what I mean we're, oh, a million percent Aye, we're, we're, we've got all these skills in, the, in our community we can harness that society and as a working class I've said it before <laughs> I don't know how you'd have done it. It's an ingenious way. Um, like we've got the Tories in power, and I don't know how they're there. There's so there's so much merry as working class, but we've got the Tories in power, and then we've got working class uh, policemen, working class prison officers, working class prisoners. Ah, the poor locking so up the poor, eh? We're all we're all ah, locking yeah. up each other, and we're fighting against each other instead of like as you say harm finding out what we can there's so much we can, can do, be do done. I mean there's so much nah, definitely so that's kind of what I that's the kind of stuff I want to be doing and no direct I did not want to be walking up the streets talking to you guys because right. like, who the fuck am I to tell them my experience was 20 years ago I'm 40 Aye. my experience was 20 25 years ago how, how I experienced that community is now how that community is that's now right yeah, I know. so I don't know how you would also navigate the difficulties but mm -hmm. I want to be maybe a like sort of supportive role of helping people set that sort of Aye. stuff up while I'm still doing my own academic Aye. stuff like I, but I don't know how to go about it. I've helped with wee bits and pieces but just keep doing what you're doing John. I mean you're doing what you're doing is amazing and your story is an amazing story it's a inspiring story um, and it is a story that like shows the resilience and shows the kind of <clears throat> when you've got that bravery to go through and now you're out talking as a nearly going to be a doubt next time you're on here you'll be Dr McGee hopefully that is my, well, my thesis is to be in by March next year so I and I'll be finished it by then so, so you'll be back on when you're, we'll get you back on when you're Dr McGee and you can you can let us know about the, the updates but Aye. just kind of bring that we're obviously coming to an end John man and it's been a br brilliant look talking to you in the podcast it's been <laughs> brilliant content uh, but just on your just in your last kind of one of the podcast wankers now eh? like, oh, brilliant content in that like, <laughs> 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 you've changed never mind I've changed you've, you've changed, changed. <laughs> uh, 
but if you can just like if there was a fine a wee message for like anybody like pr- any of the young team prisoner to anybody that's kind of struggling out there or anybody that's going through what we went through what, what, what kind of message would you just give them just to kind of I know it's a kind of hard question to say but uh, a wee message just that you could give them a show that it's, there is another world there is another just if I can do anybody can like if you've took one thing one thing away if, you, if you've managed to listen to this whole podcast if you took one thing away from it is just know that my life was pretty hopeless in the beginning I was always got to end up a guy who spent his whole life in and out of jail for me it was education it doesn't have to be education but there's like there is basically steps you can take yourself by just being persistent right. I was told no a million times for the SPS about doing a degree about going to uni about having a university placement about having reading groups about fucking anything it was like no like this is it's a one be there one size fits all thing here and you can't do that right. I'm proof that they didn't I'm proof that if you keep annoying them enough keep putting in writing just keep doing whatever it is you need to do basically that's not a short message that's a right. big long ass message mate sorry but no, that's no. what it is be persistent and just know that if I can do it anybody can do it brilliant John and uh I'll, hopefully we'll get you back on when your, your your doctor is up and I just want to thank you for coming on the show it's brilliant seeing you yeah. always always great to see you <laughs> thanks for having us mate brilliant